Hey, this is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and I'm doing a second video this week. Uh, this is a hot bird from my childhood, uh, part of my collection that I never got rid of. And it was one of my favorite cars growing up. I very rarely used it because it actually didn't roll as well as I thought it would uh, when I used to race them. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to tackling this one, and it's coming up next. All right, so yeah, this was from my childhood. Um, I've been kind of hesitant to go after it, but I was never a fan of the blue. Uh, it may be rare, I'm not sure, but to be honest with you, I don't care. Uh, it was something I've always wanted to tackle, even when I was a kid. Um, I always wanted a black one, actually, and I'm not really doing that this time. Um, as usual, with most projects, you start by, by drilling out the post. This one only has one because the front uh, headlights snap in and that's the second form of contact so it's just the rear post pretty basic uh, just got to punch it out drill it tap it um, overall um, it was kind of exciting to uh, take apart something I've had for so long um, and it is really clean I kept good care of most of the cars I have they've been in cases for a good part of their or at least the last 30 years um, the interior for being an open car uh, is very very clean um, windshield's got some scratches, I'm sure at some point. Um, I used to race these. <laughs> I used to let them go down my driveway. I had a hill, and I used to just let them go, and cars that went the furthest won. <laughs> this one never won. <laughs> but anyways, um, I cut the wheels off. I was trying to keep the integrity of the, um, the clips that hold the wheels in. Being a metal base, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so I'm using the monoblock wheels, and I went with the silver because I like the silver six spokes I just thought it looked cool and raised white letter tires on a Trans Am just or Firebird which really looks really looks cool um, they have little um, I call them tits <laughs> that stick out that kind of keep the the, the the wheels away from the inside of the uh, fender wells and it was keeping the wheels out too far and I just thought it looked kind of silly so I thought I'd grind them down to fit the wheels uh, with the monoblock wheels, if you use the brass uh, rods that come with it, um, it's pretty simple to um, to work with. Right now, I'm just kind of fitting it. I was able to slide because of the way I took the wheels out, I was able to slide them back in, no problem. Um, I always retap the holes, put the screw in for any time I'm going to strip and paint. Uh, just kind of keeps the crap out of the. Uh, out of the hole and prevents any issues down the road uh, it's just a practice that I do and some people do some people don't but I always do um, this is pretty simple um, I was surprised at how quickly the paint actually came off figuring how old it was um, I was a little worried but it did come right off center strip did its job so to fit while it's soaking in its uh, chemical bath <laughs> um, the best thing to do on these what I do is I'll crimp one end and then I put both tires on. Make sure you put them on the right way. <laughs> and you set it up. Pretty much just clip at the edge like that. And then you just recrimp. And both tires will stay on. Some of the other, um, like if you're using uh, metal shaft, uh, k &S stock, stuff like that. Um, it's a little harder to, to crimp. Uh, get yourself a good pair of pliers. Um, the base, as clean as it was, I wanted it a little cleaner. And again, this was in really good shape. And you got to use your middle finger, otherwise it doesn't work. you got to rub the stuff on. Uh, this is just the uh, same stuff I always use, which is the Chemical Guys uh, Polish uh, Swirl Remover. I'm using it with a, instead of a buffing wheel, I'm using the wire wheel. Uh, this is going to go everywhere, <laughs> so make sure you wear eye protection and you don't have anything sensitive around it. Uh, you just rub it in, and it'll do wonders. Uh, for a base that's in good shape to begin with, so it didn't take much to be honest. Uh, the windshield with the scratches, I figured I'd give it a give it a wet sand. I'm using 1,000 grit. Wipe it down, clean it, use soap and water, and then I'm using my twirly fuzzy thing, uh, my Dremel tool. Um, again, with the Chemical Guys, I swear they're not sponsoring this. I just I have this stuff I bought from my Challenger, and. Uh, I think I use it more on these <laughs> than I do anything else. Uh, just rub it on. Again, you can use your middle finger. And just polish it up. I'm not putting 
uh, uh, very little pressure on it. Um, uh, for more, more for yeah, I don't want to burn it in, but I also don't want it to catch the side of the windshield. This is, you know, with the T-top style. Um, I was a little concerned that I was going to catch it and, and and break it. So just wipe it down with a terry cloth towel when you're done. Um, I decided to go the extra step this time. I've kind of gotten crap about it. I use the uh, Future Shine. I've had the bottle for like two months. I just never used it. <laughs> um, get all the get all the drippage off and uh, cover it up so nothing sticks and because it takes a while to dry. So after a thorough douching in the sink of hot water and soap, uh, this is what we got. Again, the body's really good shape. Um, four aught steel wool really is all it took. I took this the extra step I'll show you in a minute um, this helps get the residue from the uh, citrus strip off uh, really allows you to kind of see what you're up against the body on this really like I said it it's in really good shape um, there was a few casting issues so what I did this time because I wanted to make sure this really came out good um, I used the Tamiya white primer and you can see some dingleberries in the headlights. There's still a scratch or a, a indentment there on the back window. And there's a casting line on both sides where it meets the T-top. Um, so I just wanted to be able to see it highlight that. And, and being able to sand with primer on it just helped me make sure I got it down flush. Um, so that's the only reason this primer is coming right back off. Um, I just did it for that purpose. I probably put it on heavier than I needed to, but I knew I was going to strip it anyways. Um, so here I'm just tackling those, the worst part, which was really those casting lines that kind of lead up into, from the deck lid up to the uh, T-tops. Getting in, get those dingleberries inside at the uh, headlights, make it nice and smooth. Uh, so I, again, I stripped it, and now you can see it's in really good shape. I'm going to use a silver base uh, from Createx, the Autoborn stuff, and... I did this because of the color I'm going to paint. I wanted a I wanted a silver base. I could have gone white as well. Um, I just I haven't used the silver very often, so I just figured I'd give it a shot. And I wanted to see how it acted on top of you know direct to die cast, and it worked out really good. Um, so I'm going with the Wicked Red. I'm adding some balancing clear, which I usually only use in the candies and pearls, um, but they say you can use it in everything. So I figured I'd use it in everything. Uh, give it a try. I wanted to have a certain gloss. Um, you can clear coat this stuff, and it always looks good. But I figured I'd get some right out of the right out of the gun, because uh, sometimes if you don't put it on heavy enough, it'll dry. A little bit of a matte finish. So I use about the same percentage I'd use with the candies, which is about I might have used a little bit less because I was a little hesitant. I think I used 30%, and uh, then five to 10% of the 4012 reducer. So. At that point, just dump it in your gun. Um, I had pretty good success with this. After my last, after that 57 Chevy, um, which would be my last episode, um, I was a little irritated with myself for the way it came out. Even though the paint job itself, I think, came out really good, the detail work was horrible. So um, I really wanted to get this right. So I put a really light, or light for me anyways, uh, tack coat. Again, I have to fight because I have a really heavy hand, and I do a lot of industrial painting during the day, so um, you really lay that crap on, so it's hard for me to just do it lightly. Um, so I'm putting a second coat on here, and I'll do one more coat. This stuff lays on really, really well. Um, that silver base was perfect. It gave it a nice light um, base coat to, to make the, sil uh, the red pop. So I'm really happy with the way that came out. I'm definitely going to use it again. I've used the black base many times before. Uh, the silver, this was the first time. So this is my final coat. Uh, putting this one on a little bit heavier. You can see it's definitely got a shine to it. And it actually retained that shine. It didn't dry matte. So that balancing clear definitely definitely made a difference. And I'm, and I'm happy with it. So I set the wheels inside. Uh, I had to grind away a little bit of those tabs so I'm just putting a little bit of glue just more of a precautionary thing um, I did clear coat the car I put a light clear coat on because I'm putting this decal on which I was so worried about um, most of these the last decal I did from the red line shop was like a real thick decal 
and I was co totally caught off guard that this was a uh, this was really flimsy. It's actually nice. It was the way it should be, really thin. You can see it kind of folds in on itself as I'm putting it on. Um, so it kind of caught me off guard. But with the water-based paint, I wanted the clear coat on top just to make sure as I was putting a decal on, I wasn't taking paint off. And I'm using the Micro Set. I'm um, having had good luck with the Micro Sol, but the Micro Set stuff um, really worked good. It was the hood was fairly flat, anyways. It was just that one um, center line that you have to worry about. Um, worked out really well. I was happy with it. Came out really good, and then I'll clear coat it again on top of that. Then it's just a matter of detail. Um, I wanted to detail the the grill and headlight assemblies, which isn't much. It's just a little bit on the on the sides of the uh, on the nose. So I'm using a Citadel um, Abaddon Black, which dries. Um, I think it looks good. I think it's got a nice finish to it. It's more, I'd say, probably semi-flat black, uh, not semi-gloss. And then I'm mixing some silver and white for the headlights. Um, same thing, Citadel Paints. I believe it's a lead belcher or iron breaker. I'm not sure. And then their white is like a paste. It's so hard to keep that stuff um, from clumping up. But you're going to water it down anyways. So it works out good. So it kind of gives it a metallic white as far as the finish goes. So um, a little leery on doing that, but it worked out really good. I was kind of happy with it. So gave it the nice headlight look that I was looking for aside from, you know, actual headlights. I think they look pretty damn good. Um, I did a few other details. I had to get inside the, um, the brass um, axle, you know, and the silver wheels kind of stuck out. So... And it's just a matter of putting it back together and because I fit things so many times um, it really was a piece of cake to be honest with you um, I already knew everything was gonna fit snap in the um, well, actually just place in the windscreen windshield and then there's two tabs on the back that pop into the interior um, and that's about it put the base on screw it down and you're ready to rock so um, I'm really happy with the way this one came out um, really just one of those projects that went good from the beginning all the way to the end that's why I'm I was expecting to put this as next week's video but um, I finished it already and I'm already half done the next project so uh, I'm kind of impatient so I figured after the debacle with the 57 Chevy I put this one up this is where we started and uh, you know this was from my childhood so I think I bought it in 78 80 whenever they came out I'm sorry for the little bit of a blurry camera there but um, my camera wouldn't focus, but this is what we got, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. We we'll gave you some inspiration, and I uh, want to appreciate, you know, everything that everybody does in the comments and the likes and the subscriptions, and I'll catch you on the next one.